thank you, Joel Telling, the 3D printing nerd, for this Wanhao Duplicator 6, which I am reviewing for you today. Wanhao is a company that makes 3D printers, and they are known for making 3D printers that are compatible with other 3D printers. I have many Wanhao parts in my Replicator 1 here, because they will take an existing design, iterate it, make it slightly better, and sell that to you. Now, the Duplicator 6 is not a cheap machine by any means. It's definitely, I wouldn't say on the highest end, it's right mid-grade for a 3D printer. It's on the high end of what I would consider for the home market. If you were a prosumer or even industrial and you wanted a 3D printer that you could uh, use in an office setting or something like that, you might look at a Wanhao Duplicator 6. And so I approached this review, uh, evaluating this, from that perspective, either a high-end user or a, a industrial user who wanted like a first printer for it. And I gotta say, about midway through this review, first or midway through evaluating this unit on my first day, I was a little bit concerned about this review. Not that I had anything bad to say, but just that I didn't have anything to recommend this printer for. It was meh. It was good, but not great. There, the the build area is bigger than some, but not as big as others. The user interface was definitely better than most, but not as good as it could have been. There's there's no Wi-Fi, there's no auto leveling, it's got a single extruder nozzle, just nothing was wowing me. But then I did find something that really impressed me and this unit really started to impress me. Let's talk a little bit about the goods and the bads about this first, my pros and cons list. The first thing that I noticed was that they had what looked like a direct drive on a, uh, uh, it looks like they've got space for an E3 on there, which makes for a very tall unit, but very exciting to me. I love direct drive feeds. Bowden style is okay, but direct drives are, are I feel, superior, especially for um, moving hotter and or, or hotter plastics or softer plastics through here. Now, the other thing that I noticed was that this, uh, to me, especially with the user interface, is a Ultimaker style machine. But the Ultimakers are Bowden, so they've taken an Ultimaker and made it a direct drive. Hey, big plus for me. Absolutely love it. The design is sturdy. This is all metal construction and it ain't going nowhere for you. You can really beat up this machine and it'll take it. And I love that. It handles high temp plastics good. I don't know if it'll go as high as nylon. Uh, I haven't run any of that through it, but all the high temp plastics, PLA, uh, ASA, and, and uh, high temp PLAs that I've run through here have worked really well. And again, I'm, I said the interface was Ultimaker. Uh, looks very much like the Ultimaker interface, and that's good. It's better than Marlin. I, I've nothing against the people who work on Marlin. They're doing the best they can with the cheapest components that they can, but spending a little bit more on the interface is good. However, it's still a 3D printer interface. You have to load up Cura and, and run a print through it and then bring it over here. Or it, actually, I use Simplify 3D. I brought up Cura and they have their own version of Cura that is uh, set up for their printer, but it's the old version of Cura. So I tried setting it up on Cura 2 and it was difficult to get set up. I might have been able to do it, but then I went over to Simplify 3D and lo and behold, Simplify 3D already has a profile for the Duplicator 6 in it, so I just used that. Uh, now, one of the first downsides that I noticed was that the filament doesn't have a guide tube to bring it in. It was, uh, it's just kind of out here in the open, and in fact, it doesn't even have anything to pull it off of the filament, off of the, uh, the roll in the back, and that seems a little bit odd to me. It's not a big deal, but it is odd, and it does make it difficult for handling uh, soft plastics like TPU. I tried some TPU on here. I wanted to see what it would do up here. Now, they do have this little open window to the gear that's pulling down the filament, and I love that. It was absolutely cool. In fact, it was perfect for telling when the TPU squirted out sideways and didn't feed in properly because, yup, that happened. This unit doesn't handle TPU very well. It might handle some of the more rigid, soft, flexible plastics, but TPU it doesn't. Now I checked on their website and they promised that they can do flexibles. 
And I also found out that this unit here is not the unit that you will buy today. This is one of the earlier units, but that they have since upgraded it. And if you buy it now, it comes with an enclosure so it can handle ABS, which I'm not excited about. I'm done with ABS now, but they do come with an enclosure and supposedly they fixed the, the uh, issues with putting TPU in. So maybe you can put TPU in there. I don't know. It's also been mentioned elsewhere that the the fan here is completely unacceptable for printing PLA. And I've got a PLA print here that I'm gonna pretend that I have to pry off the build plate. <laughs> okay, there we go. And if you'll notice on the inside here, there's a lot of stringing going on inside of my board here and some of it on the outside. And that's because this fan is just unacceptable, but you can upgrade that. So that is left to you. Now, as a, as a person, looking at it from an industrial standpoint, getting a printer that immediately needs to be upgraded is unacceptable. I want to be able to be printing all the time, but as a home user wanting uh, for a first 3D printer and having to do a few little upgrades, that's actually a very good thing. So it kind of depends on who you are. I love that it comes with a printed manual. So many 3D printers, especially when they're trying to save money, don't print the manual. They put it on an SD card in your printer and there's no indication of where that SD card is or where the info is. So you end up fumbling around for a long time before you realize they should honestly just print a three by five card and say, hey, find the SD card and plug it in, dummy, because it's got the latest version of the manual and all the software you need. Not a problem here. They've got a great manual with lots of pictures in it and very well illustrated and, and explained. Didn't have any problem going through this. I tried to broadcast the first hour of me unboxing and using this on Twitch TV, but I was having trouble with my internet. You can see some spotty versions of it if you go to Twitch TV dot, uh, 3D printing or slash 3DP professor. But uh, walking through this manual in that first hour, I was able to get up and printing within an hour. That is phenomenal. It also comes with tweezers weird uh it comes with a little adapter card so that you can use your sd card with the uh uh usb that's very cool didn't need it but it's very cool also comes with a spatula for prying prints off but at this point like i said i'm going yeah it's, it's it's good but it's got nothing for me to recommend it for it's not exciting me in any way and then i got a filament jam now you might not think that a filament jam is a good thing but filament jams are a reality of 3D printing. It happens all the time. And I got my first filament jam within 24 hours. Now, normally this is an intensive process. I have whole videos where I'm spending 10 minutes pulling off my extruder and unscrewing this and that, and tearing the whole thing apart to get at a little piece of plastic to pop it off. But Juan Hao hit it out of the park with this one. The entire extruder assembly is connected to this metal front faceplate. Two screws up here removes the feeder up here. Two screws down here removes the motor and the, the nozzle is held on by two little screws. Now they recommend on their website getting a long tool for just shoving the plastic through when it gets jammed, but I didn't have that tool. However, I managed to probe through and I found out that the jam was right here at the nozzle end. And all I had to do was unscrew two little screws this nozzle came off, I pulled out the piece of plastic, put it back in, and put the screws in. Less than a minute of my time to fix the most common problem in 3D printing. And I don't know of anybody else who has done this yet. I love this. This extruder right here hit it out of the park. Now, the other thing I need to talk about is that the, uh, the whole XY mechanism runs on a double rod, which I've never seen before. And I wanted to see if that would maybe eliminate some corner ringing. So I printed an ER board again, which I'm printing a lot of ER board, so I might as well use the duplicator to do it. And here's a print that I printed uh, on another 3D print. Um, uh, what's the last one that I reviewed? Anyways, uh, my, my other 3D printer, I'll think of it in a A net, A8, see, I got it. Uh, and you can see here, well, I don't know if you can see here, but this print has a lot of corner ringing. That It's those echoes that you see whenever it turns a 90 degree corner because as it turns a 90 degree corner, there's still some of the other motion in play. So it kind of wiggles a little bit before it straightens out. And depending on how fast it's moving, that wiggle 
it produces extremely regular echoes around the words, around the corners. Just every surface of this is covered with, with corner ringing. And it's just one of those things that in 3D printing you accept, but you don't have to accept it. The Duplicator 6's print has almost no corner ringing that I can see. Very minimum, if any. Honestly, I'm having a hard time spotting it. That dual rod construction on the XY plane almost eliminated, I, I would say eliminated, corner ringing in the prints. And these prints are far and away much better looking than prints that don't have that. So it, while it's still a, 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 a big heavy extruder with a motor on it that people that's the reason why people use Bowden is so that you don't have all that weight on there because that weight is what causes corner ringing. They don't have any because of the dual rod construction. So it produces beautiful, better than a print from a, a printer of similar quality and a uh, similar price and way better, way better than the cheaper printers. You really get your money's worth for that aspect alone. So in the end, would I recommend the Duplicator 6? And more importantly, who would I recommend it to? Obviously, it's a little bit more expensive. If you can't afford the cost of a Duplicator 6, then you're not going to get it. But if you can afford it, and you don't mind the fact that it only has single nozzles, so you're limited to that. And people will tell you that dual nozzles is not something that's used very often. And that's true, but I like having dual nozzles. Still, if you can live with single nozzles, just like everybody else, otherwise, this is a great printer and a huge print area. It's going to be very rare that you're going to run across the print and go, man, I wish that I had a bigger print area. This thing is huge. The build plate is, they, they bring a spare build plate. It's a piece of, I, I, I oh, sorry, knocked the microphone there. The build plate is, is build tack. I'm pretty sure it's build tack. It's very close to build tack. And so it's an excellent build surface. Um, I might consider one day upgrading this build surface to a removable plate. Build tack makes one that fits right on here and uh, doesn't require any leveling. So I might use build tacks own removable plate for this one uh, and definitely upgrade the fan but otherwise spot on great machine and if the newer versions are as good as as they're saying it is then it's totally worth the price of admission the duplicator 6 i love this machine uh it's it's a really good 3d printer it's great for the price and it's got some great innovations one how good job on making this work brilliantly um so that's that's my review and i hope that it helps you if you have any questions go ahead and ask them in the comments and i want to uh, uh say hey thank you to my patreon supporters who helped me out making these videos the names are up here and there's still room so if you want to get in go ahead and support me on patreon but otherwise thank you very much for watching safety first see you next time